What's up, Twitch? It's good to uh, be back. Thank you for joining me on this Saturday night. We're going to do a little bit of WSOP grind. There's a little tournament starting here in just about two minutes. One minute and five seconds. So we're going to go ahead and register for this thing and get it going. Uh, I had a pretty good day yesterday, but a very, very long night. So we're probably going to uh, kind of cut it short a little bit earlier than normal tonight. Just because, uh, man, I'm beat. That was a crazy roller coaster ride we took yesterday. Um, went from less than one big blind, less than one big blind to uh, taking down the whole tournament. If you missed it, um, we put it up on, on on the highlight reel. We also exported it to YouTube. But uh, if you were here, wow, what a roller coaster ride that was! Um, thank you guys for joining us, Bob Hatter. Good to see you, buddy. And every, everybody, uh, we are we are back to uh, just any you know all chat. So uh, hopefully you'll be joining us. Let me go ahead and show you what we're going to be playing tonight. We're going to start off with this 2K guarantee. Uh, let's get this up and going. Good. And it looks like we are. Auto minimizes that lobby. So now we just, uh, it's starting out. Cards are in the air. Let me go ahead and get the table up. Get the lobby down and uh, we'll get this show on the road. Hopefully we'll take down another final table. Doing doing pretty good yesterday. Yesterday we did, uh, we had uh, two for two in the monies and one actual W. So uh, we'll try to keep that going. Hopefully you guys also got a chance to take a look at our poker clinic today where we talked a little bit about the two tools that we use the most in winning these No Limit Hold'em tournaments, the blind steal and the continuation bet. We talked a little bit about bet tapering. We introduced the ideas of game theory optimal play versus exploitive play. We used to say exploitative, but the more I think about it, the more I like just exploitive. They're both words. They both uh, aren't going to uh, trigger the spell check error, so let's just get rid of those extra extra characters, shall we? So here we go. We took the rebuy right away. Um, starting off and starting it off with eight thousand chips, and planning on taking the add-on. We're gonna keep on rebuying and adding on into this thing until uh, the rebuy and add-on period is over, which it's gonna be about an hour and a half. So uh, sit back and enjoy the ride. It's going to be a uh, going to be a little bit of a of a grind session for a little while, but this is the kind of hand we do want to play. We'll make it 3x. It's ace eight suited. It's the kind of hand that can make a uh, very strong second best hand pay us off. So, so far we like it. We don't really like putting too much action in, but we're, we will go ahead and uh, put in a little uh, pot inflation bet. Um, ace queen nine of hearts. Do we love it? Not really. We'll fire out a half pot size bet anyway. We've got uh, we've got some messengers from uh, some people who hang out with us on the uh, on the stream. That was pretty much the perfect turn card. It does get uh, it does let Jack Tins uh, get there, but we're not going to worry too much about Jack Tin. We're going to go ahead and keep on firing as if two pair is the best hand, and it is. So if you are just joining us and you haven't yet hit us up on uh, on on Twitter, please do at Dutch Boyd and at one st at first for X and Wall. Good to see you, Ira. Ira Gary, is that how you say that? Ira Jerry, Ira Gary, is the is the G or is the G a hard or a soft G? I don't want to mispronounce your name, man. But it's good to see you in chat. I really appreciate you joining us tonight. Bob Hatter, you know what? I like it. I like it. Maybe I should start just dressing up to the nines. You know, maybe I should like wear a tuxedo. <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually a pretty good idea. It wasn't too long ago where uh, you know I, I didn't even own a pair of jeans. I was just sweat, you know, sweats and a t-shirt all the time. I looked like a scrub. Uh, I think it was Yuval Bronstein was like, you know what you should do, Dutch? You should put yourself in a suit coat. And uh, I tried it. 
I felt good about myself for uh, for a while, and then uh, I still have a couple of a couple of suit coats in there. I still wear them when I'm doing the poker clinic. Uh, it's just so much more comfortable this way. What's up, Almanac? Good to see you, man. Good to see you guys. Good to see all of you guys in chat. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I gotta make sure that our sound is off. Yeah, sound is off. Off to not so bad of a start, you guys. Up, uh, what is that, about 8%, 7%? Up 7% of our starting stack. And uh, some interesting stuff to talk about today. Interesting stuff to talk about. So, what did you guys? What did you guys think about the uh, the poker clinic that we had? Did you uh, did you subs in in here get a chance to take a look at it? We've got a little bit of a message messenger uh, coming in. Let me see what we've got here. That's a pretty good flop for 7-3 suited, you guys. I almost missed it. I almost uh, I almost lost it because I was looking at my phone. Okay, so let's go ahead and fire out uh, half pot or three quarters. We'll do three quarters. We got, uh, I think, a viewer in chat who has, uh, who, who wants some help. He says, I need some poker advice. I'm still playing Club WBT and regularly making the weekly championship event. The Club WBT, if you guys don't know it, it's uh, one of those subscriber sites. So it's a free poker site uh, that you play for free. You can win real money, and it's kind of like a subscription thing. So uh, what's up, Ida Bra? What's up, Xmoda? Optic, Glub, Glub. Good to see you guys. What's up? We'll go ahead and call this with the King Queen off. Definitely the, those those kind of free roll sites. Uh, what do you got? You have Hog Wild, Poker. You've got Club WPT. You've got uh, uh, you've got Inlop. All of those are are pretty good ways to get started. Anytime you have like a, one of those free sites where you can actually win real prizes, um, you know, free poker doesn't really it doesn't really play like real poker does. If there's nothing at risk, if there's nothing. At, you know, to, to encourage somebody to play correctly, to play well, to actually try and care when they lose, um, you, you just end up basically playing bingo with everybody. But if there's actually a prize at stake, it doesn't even matter if people put up their own money. If there's actually something that you're playing for, you know, you see an immediate change. The difference between playing for something and playing for nothing is night and day, you guys. We'll go ahead and get out of the way here. If they want to bet us off of our king, queen off, we'll get out of there. Okay, nice, nice hand there, Luscious Crow with the old seven-three off suit. So, we've got a buddy, Rob, who is wanting some advice. So he's playing Club WPT regularly. <sighs> Grips banning you hurt, huh? X Moda. Who got who got banned? Oh, Optic Glub Glub. Sorry to hear that you got banned, Optic Glub Glub. <laughs> Why did you get banned, man? Why did they ban you? Uh, you got to be careful around here. We're uh, we're we're pretty quick with that ban hammer. Just make sure to keep it positive and uh, <laughs> I'm sure and keep on X and Y's good side. So <laughs> Bob Hatter, dude, a tux would be bomb. What's up, Gold34 Ice? Good to see you. Circuit's on. Thank you so much for the new subs. Hey, Circuit's on. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to really give you the warm welcome. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I, I really do appreciate the sub today. And uh, let me go ahead and give a little... A little warmer of a welcome. I'll tell you, Circuit's on. The only reason I didn't you know, fly out of my seat was because... I'm trying to put these poker clinics together as kind of, uh, 
you know, I'm going to be putting them on YouTube and probably putting them on my own site, pokerclinic.com, down the, down the line. So I didn't want to get too crazy. But every single time I see that sub, uh, you know, that sub notification in the chat, I'll tell you, it, it really just makes my day. It really does. And if you haven't gotten it already, check your inbox. We're sending you that DRM-free copy of Poker Tilt for your Kindle, or your iPad, or your Nook. What's up? What's up, goal? goal? <laughs> I'm kind of worried that like you're on top of me or something. Look behind you, goal. Goal 34 ice. Look behind you, man. <laughs> uh, so mathematics. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. The, the pre-flop size and the people are so monkey see monkey do in poker. People are raising 2x and most don't know why. But now people are defending in the blind so wide it's wrong. I think you'll see pros opening to 3x a lot more now due to the blind defense. Mathematic, you know, part of me agrees with you. And, you know, part of me kind of feels like uh, you're, you're seeing so many people who just always defend in the big blind. But keep in mind, you know, a big reason why you're making it that 2x isn't, isn't so much to just take the blinds and innings without a flop. It's to establish yourself, you know, for that, that post-flop c-bet. And the smaller you make it pre-flop, the more likely you're going to get that fold on the flop. You know, if you make it 3x, I think that the people who are, are going to end up defending, and you're still going to have a lot of people defending because they're going to look down, and they're going to see at least, you know, they're going to they're going to still see three to one uh, on their money, and then you know the smart pros that they factor in implied odds are still going to defend a lot. Uh, I think that uh, the the nice thing about making it 2x is that the the less invested that you you get your opponent to be in the pot the more likely you get that seed bet to go through um what are, you, what are your thoughts on that mathematics i don't know the game definitely always changes and maybe you're right maybe you, you will see this tapering end up not actually being uh correct strategy at all maybe it'll just be like a fluke and kind of like a phase kind of like that uh you know that that phase where I, where i um w w was really liking hootie and the blowfish you know uh, and then it just disappears. <laughs> I don't know. It's good to see you, Sal. It's good to see you, T-H-R-C-L-B. Um, I missed the poker clinic. Yet, when was it today? I was at my... Okay, so uh, goal 34 ice. It should we, we, it should be in the highlights for the subs. Uh, it's, not, it's not on YouTube yet. I, I'm exporting it, and then I have to go edit it down. Uh, I'll probably still even leave it unlisted for a little while until, uh, you know, we'll just leave it as a, as a highlight for about a week, and then next week we'll release it to, to everybody. Um, Optic Glub Glub. So, 9iron12 says, thanks for the clinic. Again, a clinic on post-flop play is something I'd be really interested in. Okay, 9iron, I'm gonna go ahead and write, I'm gonna go ahead and write that down, and, uh, Try to incorporate some of those ideas into future clinic sessions. And we make this fold, 9-6 off suit. It's definitely a fold. So, uh, post-flop play. You got it, 9-iron-12. Nine, nine, I'll try to make that happen. And, and guys, especially you subs, if you have actual hand histories you want to go over or any sort of, uh, I mean, one thing I'd be, I'd be down to do is if any of you guys had like a, a complete tournament history that you played that maybe you'd like me to go ahead and analyze the same kind of way that we, you know, sit back and, and do those HPT viewing parties. Maybe we do, you know, a subscriber tournament history party where we kind of sit back, watch all the moves you make and really just tear them apart. <laughs> If that sounds like fun to you, if that sounds like fun to you though. Let me know because it's something like I, I feel like I would like to give uh, as as a perk benefit to the subscribers. And kind of one of those things that you know you could go pay Jonathan Little or uh, you know Alec Torelli or some of these other coaches uh, a lot of money, or you can uh, pay five dollars to be a sub and and get the same thing from me. So let's if you guys have some tournament hand histories that you want to send my way, we could uh, kind of kind of put them at the end of next uh, next week's poker clinic. I don't know what next week's poker clinic is going to be about, but I think I'm going to start tackling probability theory, and I think I'm going to um, introduce the idea of Bayes' theorem, and uh, using that Bayesian reasoning to kind of update your beliefs a as a hand goes on, and you know, update your your likelihood assessments. God, we don't like Luscious Crow making that open limp. 
Pie Mans, yes. We we ended up, we won. We were we were down to uh our, our last big blind after we got aces cracked and we hated life. I, I still don't you know, I, I still that 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 pocket aces hand still haunts me because I feel like we misplayed it horribly. But when I look back I'm not quite sure where we misplayed it. You know, I, I I've been thinking about it a lot today. I've been thinking, well, did we misplay it pre flop? I mean we're in the big blind against a small blind raise. And I think that if we shove, we don't get the action we want from the small blind. Uh, so then we can say, well, on the on the flop, did we misplay it on the flop? I'm not so sure because I kind of feel like if we shove, we don't want to lose him. We don't want to. Uh, we we want to encourage him to fire out an, another. Uh, we'll go ahead and fire out a half pot size bet here. This is one of those spots where we can't count on a check raise because nobody has a pre-flop aggression, uh, and we actually did uh, hit a flop. That ace doesn't really help us much. We'll go ahead and check, and uh, we're just done with the hand, really. We're, we're not going to try to get him to fold anything. What's up? What's up, Crouching Goat? Good to see you, buddy. Fist bump. Fist bump. And V-Rob. Oh, Michelle. V-Rob sent us a pretty cool picture of him uh, holding the book on the beach. Oh, I thought it was him holding cupcakes. Nope. Okay. You want to see it? Yes. Oh yeah, here. Let me see. Oh nice. Oh, I wish I was on the beach. Me too. I miss the water. We'll make the call here in okay. position against uh, against that open limper, luscious crow. We're not quite ready to give luscious crow the bony fish yet, but uh, if he keeps on open limping once those antis hit, it's the first thing we're gonna do. What a great flop for six eight suited, really. Uh, and hey, V Rob, looking forward to having you on the show next Thursday. I've been uh, I've been promoting it here on the stream. I'll start uh, scheduling some tweets too. So wow, our flag just firing out a big, almost a pot sized bet. We've got Luscious Crow raising, or we got Luscious Crow coming along in. I guess we go ahead and fire out a raise. You know, if 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 our flag wants to re raise and try to get it all in here, we're probably not going anywhere. But what a lot of times this does for us is it gets us a, a free uh, a free turn card a free river card. So if we actually hit our hand on the turn, we're able to inflate the pot. If we don't, we can you know see a river usually for free. Our flag. What do you think of that? You let us get there. Our flag. Our flag fires out. Well. Yeah, let's just go ahead and try to get the rest of his chips. If he's got uh, if he's got a better uh, flush than us, then we'll just rebuy, and we'll be fine with that. But I don't think he does. I think that he's probably looking at a pretty strong hand that he's going to call off his stack with. So, and Donkey Pro, thanks so much for the sub, man. It was pretty crazy last night. So we went from uh, less than a. Uh, uh, I'm a DEA fart. Uh, usually try to start the day with a with a fruit smoothie. Kind of put on some weight in the last few years, so I've been losing it. Uh, not that you can tell, but uh, down about down about 15 pounds in the last couple of months. I had a uh, I had a hernia surgery in February. Before that, I was just I was it was pretty rough because I, I couldn't really do a lot of working out at all. So I was on my back for about three weeks and another three weeks before I could really get back to, to, to working out and running. I mean, it really felt like an alien head just coming right out. Okay, so we'll fire out. We're really supposed to make it 90 here, uh, but I kind of got, got, got kind of got carried away thinking about the pain of that hernia surgery. Uh, Luscious Crow. What can we get Luscious Crow to fold? I feel like we can get her to fold quite a bit. If we get a check here... If we got a check there, we're probably going to try to to uh, move her off something. Argneo, the next poker clinic is going to be on Saturday. Thanks for thanks for joining us for it, Argneo. We're going to be uh, we're going to be doing poker clinics pretty much every Saturday. And if there's a special topic that you want us to cover, you you know, let us know. We'll write it down and, and consider it. I think next week we are going to be doing the probability uh, introduction, uh, talking a little bit about the. Uh, the, the four fathers of probability theory. It's so crazy when you think about it, but it wasn't so long ago that someone would look at a, at, at you know, a, a coin 
and have no idea what the chances of coming up heads or tails are. You know, they look at a, at a pair of dice and have absolutely no idea how to even begin calculating what the chances of rolling a six and then another six are. Um, it wasn't until, you know, actually pretty recently in, in human history that all of those secrets of probability became, became known. And a lot of that research was done because of gambling, because of people looking at games like poker and trying to figure them out and beat them. So a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of math has, you know, it can, you, you can actually connect to a, a very straight line between advances in mathematics and gambling, which is one of those things when any, if anybody's ever questioning the, uh, the value that poker has to society, uh, always remind them of that. Always remind them of the fact that poker provides a, uh, a kind of a, an experimental sandbox that we can that we can come up with and test new new ideas and you know about you know about mathematics about probability about psychology about you know behavioral economics and you know re remind them that it's not just all you know a bunch of grinders bum hunting the losers there's really a lot more to this game and there there is a benefit to it i love poker and it's not as uh, as as dark and toxic as I think a lot of people would have you believe, you know, uh, like Dan Coleman, for example. Okay, so let's make the raise here. This isn't really a good hand. It really isn't. I don't know why we're raising here. We probably should just muck it and fold it. We're not really going anywhere with it. I just feel like we uh, gave away three big blinds because Ace-8 offsuit doesn't really go anywhere. If it's suited, then we want to play it. I didn't really like it. No, it's a it's a good uh, it, it's good thinking mathematics, and I'm you know you, you very well might be right. It's definitely something to experiment with, you know. Good to see a creepy dream. Oh, two. And uh, King EPC, thanks for joining us for the clinic. Thanks for joining us on the stream. Uh, what did we just have? Ah, uh, King EPC, man. Thank you very much for the donation. Wow, 50 bucks. Thank you so much, man. We're going to... Uh, we're, I don't know what to say. Anything that uh, you know, I can do to, uh, to help you out, and uh, let me know. Please let me know. That, that's huge. To me. That's huge. I love seeing that. What a great sound that is. Thanks so much, King. Thanks so much. <sighs> THRCLB, I record a final table I made last week. Where can I send it to you at? Uh, Dutch at DutchBoyd.com, THR. Please go ahead and send it over. And, uh, you know, maybe we, if you want the analysis, we can, we can probably do a little analysis at the end of one of these poker clinics at the next, you know, next week maybe on Sunday. Um, It started above the belly button. I'm a DEA fart. It was pretty bad. It was pretty rough. Uh, not so. I mean, like for the, for the first week, I felt like I just I wanted to die. It was just horrible pain when like after I was done with the surgery. And I tickled you. Yep, and she was just tickling me all day. To make him laugh. It was horrible. Did you, have, you didn't see where I put my glasses, did you? Let's see. I think it was on the table. Was it? You want me to help you? No. Uh, circuits on, you better believe I'll be playing that Colossus. I'll be, uh, taking as many bullets as I need. I'm really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. Okay, guys, it looks like we do have that, uh, poker clinic on YouTube exported. So I'm going to, uh, it's not listed yet on YouTube, so you're not going to be able to find it on YouTube, but I think that if you have the link, I'm going to give you guys the link. If you missed the poker clinic today, you can go take a look at it. I'll make that fold. It's uh, I think that'll do it. What were the topics today? Do you remember what the topics today were, Michelle? Sea bedding. Sea bedding. 
blind stealing and that's all tapering and what else and GTO versus exploitive play and Gary Hotmail yes you can see number one it's uh, it's also over there on YouTube. If you just type in you know Dutch Boyd Poker Clinic, it'll it'll show up. Okay, guys, we're gonna go ahead and take a shot with this A6 suited. It's early on in the tournament that uh, you know you wouldn't want to try this unless we're very deep. But the effective stacks are very deep. A6 suited is a pretty easy hand to play post flop because you pretty much either um, you know hit some sort of flush draw, hit some sort of magic like a two pair hand or trip sixes, or you're just giving up. Uh, so we're taking a, a little hundred hundred chip shot at you know, pretty deep stacks. Ah, CJ's, CJ's, thank you very much, man. Fist bump. Welcome to the crew. Uh, really appreciate it, CJ's. Are you gonna, like, take over the room? There's there's that there's that sub animation that we like to see thank you cjs for the uh, for the sub welcome to the crew we're going to go ahead and uh ship you that uh let me give you give you the uh we're going to go ahead and ship you that drm free download link for poker tilt it's the book i wrote it took more than a year to write i hope that you enjoy the read if uh if you get a chance to read it do let me know what you think and if you don't have a chance to read, if you just don't like reading books, or if you get through the first chapter and think, man, that sucks, at least go read the afterword. Uh, the afterword has a pretty, you know, pretty solid uh, live poker tell. And I definitely think that just the afterword is, is, is probably worth the price of admission. Um, it's, it's gotten me a lot of chips in, in tournaments. Brandon Cantu said it was the, the most, you know, the best tell he'd ever heard in his life. So, uh, if, and if that's the case, he's going to really enjoy reading my Poker Tells book, which I'm hoping to come out, you know, have out before the, uh, before the World Series. Um, and, C and CJ's, thank you, you know, again so much for the sub. You, you know, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you. So thank you so much for supporting the stream. And if there's anything I can do to make that sub a better value for you, please let me know. Please let me know. Okay. I think, I think you should listen to Bob the Hatter's. Or, yeah, the Bob Hatter's suggestion about making it a Zelda sound is pretty cool. Can you use that? Sound? I think that's a good idea. Can you use that? <laughs> and we could have the uh, we, we we could have the uh, the the uh, little pop up be that Zelda girl that you have to donate uh, donate money to before she tells you like what the secret is to get through the woods. What was it? Left, right, left, right. What, east, west, east, west. I can't remember what the secret was, but I remember you had to give her exactly the right amount. Um, okay, I'll take a look at it. I'm a, I'm a DEA fart. I really do like those, those smoothies. I don't really know that I could go raw vegan. But uh, RT Kabuto, RT Kabuto. Good to see you, man. And Swedish Poker Ninja, hey Dutch Boyd and Chad, I really like your stream. Thank you, Swedish Poker Ninja. Uh, okay, so we are on a uh, we are on a three minute delay, and we are on a break. So I'm gonna get a little bit of coffee in me. I'm gonna see if there's I can. I'm gonna get a little X and get some uh, eczema, some coffee, and I will be right back in two minutes. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
YouTube? I think it will. Will Will Poker Clinic work? Is that what you're asking? I wonder if we miss anything, guys. The Zelda theme work on YouTube. Like, can we use it on Twitch? Yeah. Can we use it on Twitch alerts? I think so. Can we give you a shout out? I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things that, like, probably not really okay to use, but, I mean, it, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Swedish Poker Ninja, shout out to Swedish, and um, thank you in real life. Um, yeah, thank you in real life. Thanks for joining us, man. Swedish Ninja, did you, did you get the Swedish Poker Ninja? Because he's a ninja. I did. Oh, you did? I did say hi. Oh. Um, it is pretty cool seeing ninjas in the chat. Uh, muffin. Nashville, Vegas, seven 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 seven. Uh, Tom K. Uh, I would definitely consider it if uh, you know if if uh, you were interested in you know getting together for some coaching. I definitely consider it. Uh, the the poker clinic is really you know something I'm doing every weekend for the for the Twitch stuff. I've done coaching before though. And if there are you know, some specific things that you want to talk about, I'm all, all about it. What's up, Nash Vegas? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, Scar Scara Muffins. Scara Muffins. Yeah. You're right, Scara. It, it is pretty bad software. It's, like, really ugly. And it has all sorts of issues and problems. But uh, it is a legal online card room here in Las Vegas. So it's, you know, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I missed some hands. I don't know how many hands I missed. Not too many. Shipasaurus, or... Yes, that's Shipasaurus. That's pretty cool. Shiposaurus. That's a pretty cool username. I like that, I Shiposaurus. Like Get a better chair, bro. I know, Shiposaurus. Don't make fun of our chair. I know, it's very I uncomfortable. I chair for $5. It's very uncomfortable. It's true. Michelle, Michelle bought it for $5. It's a very uncomfortable chair, Shiposaurus. Um... You know, maybe, maybe we can get you to, uh, <laughs> we'll to, get a better one <laughs> maybe we, if, if we can get you to, uh, donate to the chair fund, Shiposaurus. <laughs> Dutch wants a really nice chair. I do. I've been trying to convince, convince Michelle that one of those, uh, Herman Miller Aerons is a good investment. Hi, pillow man. Uh, but she's looking at it and thinking, I mean, come on, that's, it's a lot of money to spend on a chair. You have a chair. I'm like, uh, uh, Yeah. I'm a DEA fart asks Dutch, any opinion on that pro poker player that slaughtered his parents to collect insurance money? No. What a sicko. Uh, was it I, th I think I saw it on TV. I think it was one of those uh, To Catch a Killers or something. I don't really have much of an opinion on it, again, except I'm not, I, I, I don't support anybody killing their parents for, you know, to collect the insurance money. I'm a DEA fart, so it's pretty sick, pretty lame. Um, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty disturbing. It's pretty disturbing. But I think that the, the, the fact that they were trying to make him into some sort of poker pro is, is kind of lame, really. Um, he's a sicko. The guy's a sicko. And he's not killing his parents because he's a poker player. He's killing his parents because he's a sicko. What's up, Danger Meow? Good to see you in chat, man. Very good to, ch good to see you. Check Ray's MM. Dutch, remember when Moneymaker called you with threes against King Queen in the main? Your face is priceless. Thank you, Check Ray's. I do remember that. Uh, I do remember that. I talk about it a lot in my book. If, uh, if you uh, want to read my thoughts and my reaction about it, um, check out Poker Tilt. Is it? I kind of feel like the we had Trestle, uh, one of our one of our uh, one of our subscribers, make that up for us. It is kind of like it does look like it's about the same. You know, it's tilted a little bit, right? A little bit different. Of course, you're right, Bob Hatter. It's pretty much the same thing. Pretty much the same thing. Ah, uh, Callum Dennis. 
thank you very much for the subscribe, buddy. Fist bump. Welcome to the crew. Thank you, Callum. Somehow we missed a uh, space there. That's what it's supposed to look like. Thank you so much, Callum, for the uh, for the sub and for supporting the stream, supporting poker on Twitch and supporting this stream in particular. We're going to go ahead and ship you that DRM free copy of Poker Tilt for your Kindle or your Nook or your iPad uh, or your desktop reader. Hopefully you get a chance to give that a read. And uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I, I really can't, Callum Dennis. If uh, Callum Dennis... Callum Dennis? Was I saying Callum Dennis? I'm going to guess that that's Callum Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to tell you, it, it really... Uh, go get my $500 chair from my... I will take you up on that, V-Rob. If we can make that happen, that'd be so awesome. Because this really chair like sucks. It sucks. You can have it. You can keep the chair. You can have it back. You can have it back. Thank you. And I will cherish that chair. I'm not really sure, Tom. If uh, if you want to hit me up on at Dutch at DutchBoard.com, we can give it. We can definitely talk about it. It's going to really depend on how many people uh, you have with you. Usually, for like one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, I've done you know 300, 300 an hour. I think uh, right now I've got them listed for 250 on my uh, on my site. We could probably work out a, a deal if you've got a couple of other people with you and you wanted to, to go for a few hours. Um, Depends on when, uh, and uh, you know, Tom, my my World Series is going to be crazy, crazy this summer. So I'm not even sure if, I'm, it, but it, it really depends on the time. And I would I'd definitely be willing to sit with you guys and and try to help you as much as I can for sure, as much as I can. But also keep in mind, we're going to be doing a lot of these streams, and you can pick up a lot from like the poker clinics, the HPT viewing parties, and uh, you know, just just watching the you know watching us take down some more of these smaller events uh, on WSP.com, even though it's. You know, they're, they're small. It's not that different. You don't play that differently between a $10 guaranteed and a, and a $1,500 no limit. It's just really not that different. And, okay, V-Rob, I, uh, I will take good care of it. I'll take good care of it for you. Chair? Yeah. Are you getting a chair? I think so. I think we yeah. just got a, uh, I think we just got a, a, a donation, like a, a big donation of a really good chair. I'm I'm actually really excited about this. I I've been said he'll loan you the chair. Indefinitely. Oh, that that's a like, gift. That, 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 that a loan okay. indefinitely, that means that means a gift. If if you if you if you get to borrow twenty dollars indefinitely, that's a gift. <laughs> of course, uh V Rob, when you come back I'd be you know, I'd I would give you back the chair. We could probably work out some sort of trade, man. I bet that I got some cool stuff that you wouldn't mind. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it when you hey, get here into, uh, into Vegas. <laughs> if it's free, take the gift. That's Michelle. Gift. If it's free, take the For gift. gift. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm a DEA fart. I did like check raising the devil, but I also feel like, I mean, check raising the devil. It wasn't written by Mike. I would be surprised if Mike even read check raising the devil, you know? And I, I wish that, uh, I wish it would, it, it definitely was, you know, it was basically a book written you just wish there was for more information out. It's yeah, good. and I feel like it was kind of a PR piece. I feel like you know, Mike was like, you know, it, it, I, th I think it would probably originated with Rich Belsky, uh, Mike's agent and, and manager, and he was like, you know what, we got to turn your PR around a little bit, get get in front of this whole prison thing. So let's write this book. So they hit up Michael Craig, and they're like, okay, we want you to write the book, and they do a lot of work. Mike, Craig, you know, Michael Craig interviews uh, Matt Azow. But in the end, I think that Michael Craig was probably going to take it into a direction that, that Rich Belsky and Matazow didn't want to take it. And so they gave it to another ghostwriter. And I'm really, really curious what Michael Craig wanted to do with that book. I really would like to have read that book. Because I, I think that uh, Check Raising the Devil, I, I, don't, I don't feel, I, I, I really got the feeling like, I mean, for one thing, Matazow comes off as delusional. I mean, let, let's just face it. I mean, he, he's you know, telling stories about, you know, going, you know, in, over international borders with drugs shoved up his ass 
and, and then yet he he gets caught dealing ecstasy and cocaine to an undercover officer and complains that somehow his nine months in prison was unfair. I mean, there are people who are in prison right now uh, awaiting you know awaiting the death penalty. You know, you, you saw that whole Bali 9 or whatever, Bali 12, Bali dozen, whatever. Uh, you know, there's these guys who were smuggling heroin in and out of, uh, of, of Indonesia to Australia. And they're, they're getting the firing squad. You know, there's, if you ever saw that, uh, what was that, uh, Midnight Express? Is that what it was, where the guy ends up in the Turkish prison? And he's just like wasting away for for twenty years, like show me your booze, you know that one, back in the seventies, based on a true story, where you know he was smuggling drugs in and out of a country. It's basically what Matazow admitted to doing in his books, you know, smuggling drugs in and out of international space. He gets caught dealing cocaine, a large amount of cocaine. You know, he'd been had been distributing pills and ecstasy and who knows what type of drugs for for a good chunk of time. Hey, babe, you're getting dark. Do you feel like you're getting spoilers out of that book? Check raising the devil? No. no. Oh, don't give me spoilers. And yet somehow life's so unfair because he got nine months in prison. I, I, like it's like what what world do you live in, Mike? You got off easy. Um, and there's so many details of that book that I wish that he could have expressed, but he didn't. He could have you know written about, but he didn't. He held a lot back. But uh, that being said, I mean, he didn't write it. I liked it. I liked the book, though. I liked the book. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is what we've got, Java Joe. When is the H T P viewing party? The next H P T viewing party is going to be on Monday, and then we're going to do an H P T viewing party on Thursday with V Rob, Rob Perlman, who's right here in chat with us. And uh, that's going to be pretty cool. He's going to be with us. We're going to be analyzing his play, putting him under the microscope, putting all the other players at that final table under the microscope, and hearing straight from the champ's mouth how he was able to navigate the Red Rock HPT tournament here at uh, here in Vegas. So tune in for that. That's going to be Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, thanks again to the Heartland Poker Tour for allowing us to use the footage. And thank you, uh, you know, Rob, Rob Perlman, B. Rob, for... Um, agreeing to to come on with us to to do it it's going to be it's going to be a great stream and if you if you can't make the stream it'll be in the uh it, you know it'll be in the past video section here on twitch so you know subs can go through and, and re-watch it as much as they want the bob hatter <laughs> can i borrow 50 dollars indefinitely <laughs> me rob oh man one day I might take it back. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make the fold here. What's up, Chinch Dog? Good to see you in the uh, in the chat. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us, Chinch Dog. And uh, thank you guys for joining us. And King EPC, thanks for joining us, and thank you for your donation. That was huge. Thank you so much. Uh, I can't tell you how much it means to me. I mean, we're definitely, definitely appreciative over here we're going to be able to uh we're going to be able to keep this stream going we're going to be doing this every day until the world series of poker starts but i think i'm i think i'm going to really try to make a lot of time during the world series to uh you know keep twitching keep streaming keep hanging out with you all because i really enjoy doing it it's very cool um yeah so anyway i'm a big fan of the i am a big fan of check raising the devil I don't want to give you guys the wrong impression. I would put it on a on a uh, uh, a, a solid recommend list. Um, that being said, I, I don't think that Mike Manazel read it. I don't think he read it. <laughs> Your head's kind of chopped off in the stream. Is that, is that right? right? Oh no, it's not. It's because I was scrolled down. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, guys, I gotta Wait, admit. What about this guy that killed somebody? What, what, what is that? The guy that murdered his family. Is that something new or is that something old? Uh, I think it's a little old. Oh. I think it's something that I, I saw on like one of those uh, to catch a, a killer or something. On like the uh... but what's that guy who does it? And it's like those long, long part series on. on Do you know uh... Eric Froelich? Yeah, I know Efro. Good guy. Good guy. Do I know Efro? He's a double bracelet winner. He's. Hey, um, 
in the in the Magic the Gathering Hall of Fame. He's he's always he's one of the greatest card players in the in the history of cards. Um, yeah, he's pretty cool. Hmm. <laughs> Liquid Nails says, V-Rob, I still remember when you felted me on UB back in the day. Face, palm. Well, at least it went to V-Rob and not, uh, not Russ Hamilton. <laughs> Jaffo GM. Uh, I I'll tell you, I, I wrote about that quote yeah, in the book. I don't know if you... uh <laughs> I think you actually go into it in your book. I do. I go That's about right. how it, it's not original at all. I mean, it's basically borrowed and um, you know changed around, and no one can really take credit for quotes when it comes down to it. There's nothing original under the sun when it comes to language. Uh, but I'm going to take credit for that because I said Sal it loudest. Sal <laughs> Limeo wants to know why you're folding your hand, Dutch. I would like to know that too. Why are you folding every hand? Um, because we are pre we are pre ante. There's really not a point in us getting involved with a hand unless it has the potential to make a really, really strong hand against a second best hand. Uh, the blinds are so low right now and we're so deep that we're, we're really just kind of waiting around and, and, and until the antes kick in. We're going to be uh, playing a very small percentage of our hands dealt really the top five, ten percent of hands. Uh, there's really nothing worth stealing until those antes kick in. And so the only reason we'd be playing pots is to try to, uh, you know, try to get value out of better hands against uh, the deeper stacks. So it, this type of poker is actually very similar to what you'd see if you were playing a, a cash game. Uh, we're, we're very deep, there's no antes, so there's just no point in playing a hand like you know we look down at Jackson's you know Jack six suited. There's nowhere to go with that. Oi oi oi. Bavado Bavada poker. Good to see you. Barbecue kid is very good to see you, man. Quiet. In Texas to Nevada. Good to see you, buddy. Oi oi oi. Oi oi says Kothak six six. Dutch Killing Bird was listening to your stream last night and he was playing streaming. That's pretty cool. I like Killing Bird. I like his stream. Oh man, you guys. I gotta admit though, I'm pretty tired. Pretty tired. We're way later, way later than I thought we were gonna go last night. I kinda thought we'd just be playing for another hour. I didn't really expect on actually binking the W, but uh it's good it's a good time, guys. It's a good time. Exmo asks, how did Dutch get a good looking girlfriend? I don't know. How did, not Dutch, I mean, how did Mike Matizow? Mike Matizow? Yeah, I know Mike, I know, I know Jessica. I'll make the call. I don't think, I don't think they're dating anymore, are they? Yeah, that's what I just said. You must pay attention to your stream. But yeah, they're not dating anymore. OP, Blue Haze 9 says, nice! <laughs> OP, Blue Haze, welcome to the chat. A brew test. How are you doing, man? Welcome to the chat. Oh. Thank you for the uh, is there joining us on the can stream. Put the info tab on the tab, or, or cut a little piece of the info tab somewhere and put it, like, paste it on there. Do you know? You know what I mean? Like, I'll I'll try to just remember to hit info. Uh, crouching goat. And Chinch Dog, I'm I'm really happy to hear that you're getting something out of the stream. I enjoy doing it. Actually, you know what? I wanted to talk to you guys about that. Let me let me grab my. Uh, I'm gonna grab my my laptop really quick. I'm gonna load something up. I wanna I wanna talk to you guys about. He needs a loan, everyone. No. He's he's doing a new business, and he would like to sell you guys shakes. Yeah. I'm gonna All be doing a, a a health service business, a health food business. I'm hoping that maybe I could get each one of you <laughs> <laughs> to invest fifty thousand dollars. No. Okay. Let's see. Um, there was a really interesting thread today on one of the forums, and I wanted to read it to you and, and get your thoughts on it. We'll make the fold with the 10-3 suited. Marvelous Mars, it's good to see you, man. Butch Doid is better than 
I'm not sure who, but uh, thank you very much for hanging out with this Marvelous Mars. Where was that? Here it is. So it's getting a lot of, uh, it's actually getting a lot of comments on this stream. A lot of comments on this. You? No. It's a it's a big thread. Oh. The, the um is Twitch hurting people? That it talks about Twitch and poker. Yeah, let's Can I let's can not I read the, who, what the thread is? I can I can read the uh the, the say, very starting I think thing. You should though. just say the what the general idea is of what it is and just ask the question. I don't think you even should bring uh, up the thread at all. I mean, I don't even think that's that big a deal. I think you should be more focused on what you're doing. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it doesn't even matter. Yeah, it doesn't. It's interesting, though. Basically, well, there was you can a... ask them the question. It's not a big deal. So the, uh, the thread was written by a guy named Tim Stone. He says uh, that you know, the, the, the yeah. thread started with the, the subject, Twitch. This is going to be the nail in the coffin. Okay. Why not? Why not? It's causing controversy. Who cares? Okay. Sorry, guys. Exmo doesn't want me to talk about it, so we won't talk about it on the stream. Well, I don't mind the question at all. It's okay. It's okay. We will move on to something else. Blanche, one, two, three. Ha, ha, ha. You know you're running good when you're sitting out in the tourney and you get a walk. <laughs> it's about right. Tell me that didn't happen to me just now. Tell me I didn't just give some dude a walk. It could be. I, w I really have not been paying attention to this uh, this tournament. I'm basically just hanging out in the chat, not really caring. <coughs> I'm tired, you guys. I'm tired. I know, right? Barbecue. It, it took a long time, and I I didn't really get any sleep either because then after that I uh, started working on on the poker clinic stuff and. Got that out a little bit late today. I apologize if uh, if you guys were sitting in chat at three and we didn't get started until almost almost thirty minutes later, and that's my that's my bad. I apologize for that. So yeah, Donkey Pro. I don't know, man. I, I mean, I, that one. I keep on going back to those aces too, Donkey Pro, because I keep on thinking. I mean, I feel like I I feel like I misplayed it just miserably, Donkey. I really do. I'm like, I misplayed those aces, but then when I'm looking back, I don't know where I misplayed them. Every single, st you know, did I misplay them pre-flop? Do you feel like I should have shoved pre-flop? I mean, if we shove pre-flop, I don't think that we get the full value out of them. Um, I, so then I'm thinking, well, do we shove on the flop? But the, the plan was to not shut them down and let them you know, continue. And then when the turn hit, and now it's like just, the, the worst board possible we can imagine, I, I don't really see a point in trying to bet at that. You know? And then in the river, he fires at a half pot size bet. And we're thinking, well, we underrepped our hands so much that maybe he does have a smaller pocket pair. Or maybe he, he does have like some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of, you know, ace 10 or ace jack hand or, um, I mean, I, we can we can kind of put him on a hand that maybe he's trying to bet us off of because we underrepped it so much. So when we make the call, we're, we're not really thinking that we're going to get we're, we're going to win a lot. But I, I do think that we probably win that hand more than 30, 35 percent of the time. I don't know, Donkey Pro. I mean, the more I think about it, the more I think that maybe we fold on the on the river. I mean, is that is that where you think that we missed it, or do you think that we just get it in on the flop because you know there's no way he would ever fold the flop. But I don't think that's true. I think that there's a good chance that he folds the flop. You know, there's a lot of hands where if he's got like ace three or ace six or pocket twos, I don't think he's calling when we shove on the flop. I think that, but I, I do think that he might try to bluff us off on the turn. And we kind of would rather him get it in on the turn, give him a chance to keep on firing out. I don't know, man. I, I, I definitely feel like the hand was pretty funky and I feel like we misplayed it pretty poorly. But when I actually try to go back to that hand and say, here's where we should have done something different, I'm not really sure that I would do anything different. Um, I, I mean, I really don't know. We can be results-oriented and say we should have folded the, folded the river. 
uh, and we can we we can say well we should have gotten it all in on the flop I guess. Have you ever heard of double deck Omaha by Boogeyman One One Two One? I've never heard of double deck. Have you ever heard of double deck Omaha? No. I guess not. <laughs> Haven't heard of it. Tropical Girl 6-2 was in your game last night or the night before. I, I didn't notice. Uh, we got Desi 115. Can't hear you tonight. Very low. Uh, I, I don't know what to say about that one. The, vol the volume is pretty big, uh, pretty high, Desi. I would try uh, changing the volume on your computer maybe. Um, Dutch, what do you, what's your favorite dish that I make? Make the fold here. The fold dish? Oh, man. What's the best thing that, that XML can cook up? I mean, whew. I don't even know where to start. XML is an amazing cook. I would say uh, her her chicken adobo was something that, I mean, I'd never had chicken adobo before I met her, and she just makes a great chicken adobo. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I like steak. That's definitely one of my favorites. I really enjoy the uh, all of her lasagna dishes. Uh I love the way she cooks a steak. Man, the girl can cook a steak. Oh, wow. Pretty tough. Pretty tough because really... Oh, a wonderful lemon tart as well. Scones <laughs> and bake. The girl really, she, she, can, she can cook. I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky to have a girl who, when we go out to eat, most of the time she looks at the dish and we taste it and we both are going to have to agree that she could have done a better job. So there's very few things that we even have to go out to eat for anymore, which... Uh, really cuts down on the cost definitely cuts down on that monthly nut if you're not you know constantly having to go out to eat if you want a decent meal good to see you in nash vegas by the way me and my friend are moving out to vegas pretty soon to start new lives Do you have any advice wow um yeah, let me think about it for a second we're going to go ahead and raise to 320 on this for one thing nash vegas i would uh i would suggest living in downtown or uh or west of the uh, you know west of the west of the the 15. Don't don't go up into North Vegas. Don't get too far away from the Strip. Uh, downtown has has really taken a turnaround. There's there's some really cool spots downtown. It's kind of got a cool atmosphere, uh, cool people, cool regs. So uh, you know if you if you get kind of close to the Ogden, kind of where where Zappos is really just injecting a lot of money. We'll make this call right here. Play with King Ten suited on the button against a couple of. Uh, couple of other guys yeah donkey pro I, I i agree he could easily have two pair there we underrepped our hands so much so if you think that maybe i i fold on the river uh i'm not going to disagree with you on that one i just felt like we underrepped our hands so much that you know what we're going to actually just call here try to uh keep a couple people in Blackberry. if bcm claw or trop girl had been the uh the one to fire out we could kind of get a couple people in there, but we don't want to bet people out with the flush draw and the overcards. I mean, we do. We just have a drawing hand, and even though we're probably a favorite against uh, whatever Ricky Rhino's bringing to the party, we, we don't necessarily want people to be folding their hand. So when Ricky Rhino fires out, and if we raise, we're betting BMC, you know, BCM Claw and Trop Girl out. So that's not really what we're trying to do. We'll fire out a half pot here. The ten definitely helps our hand. Um, we don't really like this though, you know. Sit, B, B C M Claw sitting here just shoving for the rest of their stack. Now we're kind of thinking that we're we're probably waxed. We're probably looking at actually having to hit our flush. And in order to hit that flush, we're going to have to put in a full stack. So uh, no B C M Claw. We're not going to we're not going to call your overshove here. You can say the issue, Russ. The issue is whether Twitch was. The issue is whether Twitch is going to be good for poker or not. That's it. We had a guy on uh, one of the forums basically say that Twitch is going to be the nail in the coffin. It's going to kill. Going to poker. kill poker. It's That's going it. to make poker so much worse. And I was surprised at how many people agreed with him. You know, every once in a while I would see someone who was, who was like, "No, you're kind of an idiot," um, but. Most, I would say, actually, a majority of the people were like, "Yeah, yeah, you're right." 
um, Twitch is going to be really bad for the game. That's just a, you know, that, that's, I feel like that, that forms just a circle jerk of people that just don't, aren't very savvy technologically. Well, I'm going to tell you guys, I don't think there's any, uh, any question in my mind that Twitch is going to be good for the game. When you look at what's bad for the game, it's uh, in the legalization, you know, the uh, the regulatory issues, the basically the criminalization of online poker in the U.S. Uh, that's been very bad for the game and basically strangled it. The uh, the rake structure online basically is very bad for the game and strangles it. So for someone to look at Twitch and say, oh, it's going to be really really bad to introduce poker to a lot of new people, and it's going to be really really bad to teach people how to play better. It's kind of interesting because I've had actually people, I've had a lot of people come up to me and say, what you're doing is bad for, your, for the game. You're, you're teaching people how to play better, Dutch, and you shouldn't do that. Uh, I think that's bullshit. I think that the, the, the more you, you know, information that is out there, it's better for the game overall. The more people who are involved, it's better for the game. And if it means that a couple of old regs can't cut it anymore and can't beat the game anymore, well, they sh you know, they'll get weeded out. They'll get weeded out. I don't think that's really what it'll mean. I think that what will end up happening is, uh, I mean, we talked about, we, we've talked about how the poker economy is basically like a pyramid. Um, it's basically like a pyramid scheme where we need new people and new people to deposit money at the bottom, and it kind of trickles up the top, but most of it just kind of gets raked off. Um, the bigger that base is, the bigger that base of the pyramid is, the more money is in the pyramid, the more there is to go around to the people who are actually beating the game. And as far as teaching people how to how to beat the game, um, it, it's not going to change the pyramid. It's just going to uh, make it harder to, to climb. But uh, you know, the, the guys who, who who are kind of beating it right now, if the, if the pyramid gets bigger, and you know, it gets harder to climb up the top, and and they aren't working on their game every day, if they're just you know, thinking that they can just play, you know, keep on playing and keep on playing and, and everything's going to be just fine for them. If they're not changing the way that they play and they're not uh, keeping up to date with, you know, with, with, uh, with changes in the metagame and changes in, um, you know, theory and, and actually working to improve their game, well, let them slide off that pyramid. You know, the, the, the world needs, the, the, the world doesn't need everybody playing poker for a living, so... I don't know, Danger Meow. I'm pretty sure he he's kind of a regular streamer. He's been he's been streaming a lot longer than I have. Uh, nice chicken adobo says Jap OG, and you have no idea, man. Or Ponzit is great. Uh, shoot. If I could like pick one dish that she makes, I, I I can't even really really choose. She can make anything. She can make anything. You know, she made a lobster roll the other day. It was amazing. We went in and got a lobster, and she's like, you know, the the whole bit. This lobster's just clawing around, and uh, it was better than any any lobster roll I've ever had. You know, we've been going to the uh, like Planet Hollywood over at Lobster Me, and then she made a uh, uh, you know homemade clam chowder, homemade lobster bisques, homemade. Uh, her, her soups are great. Broccoli and cheddar soup. It's just great. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. XML was like, it's kind of like saying, no, no, I wasn't limping Texas to Nevada. That wasn't a limp. If you look, that was an overlimp, right? Yes, that was an overlimp. It doesn't count as an open limp. Texas to Nevada, that doesn't count as an o uh, open limp. Anyway, I'm not going to actually say it in, in chat, Texas to Nevada, but, you know, check the hand history. Damon78 actually limped under the gun. So with our pocket sixes there, we can go ahead and limp behind them, and that's okay. You can limp behind other people. You just don't want to be the first one to open limp. Um, that's, that's, that's what we preach, any open limping. But limping isn't the same as open limping. What are you going to do with v Rob Thursday or Tuesday? We're going to do one on Monday and Thursday. With v Rob. HPT viewing parties Monday and Thursday, and the Thursday one is going to be with V Rob. Exactly. 
exactly Dredgen Fog, but it's going to be good for the game uh, in general. And the more people we get into it, the more I think poker has the chance of potentially be becoming a positive sum game and a positive sum environment. You know, once that happens, uh, the sky's the limit, really, for poker. You know, right now, the, the biggest thing killing poker is is the rake, the, the hugely negative sum uh, game that it's become because of how much operators take out of every pot and every, every tournament. So if we can change it and it becomes a, uh, by the way, we're going we're gonna to pot this sucker. If we can change it and it becomes a you know, positive sum game, then you know, the sky's the limit. Seven, eight, ace. What do we think, guys? Well, I guess we fire out half pot size bet. Ah, oh, Papist. Thanks so much for the donation, man. I really appreciate it. Ricky Rhino. This is kind of weird. Is it going to be a late donation? Do I see it late? Um, I don't think so. The nation? I do, right? I see it three minutes later. Um, yeah, you do actually. You do see it. I think that we got them off of uh, probably the same hand. It's kind of hard for us to think that that Jack Ten suited is uh, is beating anything, but I almost feel like it is. Okay, we're gonna make that a little bit bigger. Papers, thanks for your donation, man. I really appreciate it. And if there's anything I can do to uh, to help you out, you let me know. Thank you so much for supporting the stream. Uh, wow, I mean, you, you've already subscribed. It's, it's way above and beyond anything that we would expect. So thank you so much, Papist. I can't tell you what it means to me. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to do whatever I can, man. Whatever I can to to help you out. Let me take a look at uh, that Connor dude sending us a boom player. Is this uh, the Olympia hand? Okay, hold on. We're gonna get this. Uh, we're gonna get this up and going here, Connor, dude. In the uh... let's take a look at what you can't believe. We'll tell you if we can't believe it too. This is our friend Connor, dude. And let's see what let's see what this looks like. We've got Connor dude with the pocket aces. And a guy just shoves. Just shoves. <laughs> so uh Connor, the right move here is to call. <laughs> you must be like just like going like this you must be cheering how how do you hide your poker face here uh does player five actually overcall with you too i mean is this what happens we make the call good call it would have been a pretty nitty fold if you don't make the call i i really hope that this is a brag and not a bad beat let's take a look uh we can we could design better flops than that connor okay not so bad, not so bad. And what do we see? Okay, you know this is you're probably fine. I mean, maybe you maybe you're up against kings, maybe you're up against jacks or king jack, or uh, something really bad. Maybe you're up against like <laughs> pocket threes. I hope that you win this. What does he What does he have? A pair of aces. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh, Connor, no, Connor, no, oh my gosh, why, why does that happen to you, buddy? I'm sorry to see it, man, that, that was a pretty, that was a pretty bad one, that was a pretty bad one, just, uh, dude shoves for a hundred big blinds under the gun with the 8-3, and, uh, that was pretty rough. This was probably kind of a misclick, guys. Got through. 
Okay, so we make the raise here. That was pretty rough, Connor. Oh my god. Pretty rough. Yeah, Optic Glub Glub, I, I, I disagree. Even, even if the U.S. was still allowing people to, to come in, you're going to run into that endless supply, you know, endless chain problem. Uh, let's go ahead and pop it up to 800. You're gonna you're gonna in, you, you're gonna run into that endless you know endless chain problem where there's no one new to get money into. So you have to rely on everybody who's existing to keep on depositing money. And eventually, losers are gonna just stop depositing money, or they're going to get better. You know, they're not they, they're not gonna just keep on uh, leaking money and leaking money. I mean, some of them will, but the majority of them will take little shots. And if they lose it, they're going to you know try to improve their game and and get a little better. Eventually. You know, eventually the players bust. Eventually the players bust. And um, we'll go ahead and... What do we do here, guys? We'll go ahead and fire out a C bet. We're not stopping. We probably could have made it a little bit less than we did. I bet we're ahead. I kind of feel like Damon78 would have at least thought about uh, firing out if he if he had a pair. Yeah, Ace King's probably ahead. I don't really see much of a point in betting it. And there's always a chance that he's got some sort of stupid pair. So, yeah, stupid pair. That's a good idea, King EPC. A new chair countdown. I like it. Okay, not, it's, it's not, not, it's not <laughs> papist. <laughs> it's papist. Papist. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> I'll never mispronounce it again. Papist, thank you so much for uh, your support of the stream. Thank you for your sub, and thank you for your donation. I really appreciate it. Papist. <laughs> I've, been ca I've been calling him Papist for a long time. Papist is a papist. Papist. Like Parappa the Rapper. <laughs> I'm a DEA fart. Rob K, thanks for joining us in the in the uh, stream, guys and CJs. Have a good night. I'm a little. I'm actually a little tired myself. I'm probably gonna hit hit the sack. Uh, hopefully before too long. I don't really know how much uh, how much steam we've got in us, you guys. I I feel like we've already been making a lot of mistakes in this tournament. I really do. We didn't. We got maybe like an hour and a half of sleep last night. Um, between putting and trying to put the the poker clinic together and going so long with that that big recovery, so uh, I'm still feeling like just still feeling drained. Hey Russ, a true player never sleeps. That's not true. Oh no, what's going on? Oh God, oh God, that was a horrible hand I just saw the Connor hand. Oh, I know. Oh. <laughs> everybody, everybody hates seeing it, Connor. We all hate seeing that. I mean, like, like how how does that happen? I'm I'm in shock too for you, buddy. I'm really sorry that that happened. So we're gonna go ahead and see bet here, half the pot, half the pot. Come on, bummer, get out of our way. Let us have one. We'll take it down with ten high. Hmm. We'll make the fold. Oh, guys, guys. <sighs> I miss playing on poker stars. I miss I miss playing on uh on those those offshore sites. After seeing that that hand Connor, I feel like I could I feel like I could crush those one cent two cent games. <laughs> <laughs> the guy just shoves. You're sitting here with the aces. <laughs> At least, uh, you know, uh, Connor, can you tell us how it works there? Do they uh, do they flip over the the hands and all in spots like that uh, before the showdown? I mean, if they flip over the hands before the showdown and uh, on stars. Then it, it would have been it would have been just even sicker. <laughs> you're sitting there with pocket aces. You make the call. You're like eight three. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Right. And then it comes completely clean, and you're like, yes, okay, good. <laughs> just eight. That's so three. Disgusting. It was so disgusting. It was so sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
If it makes you feel any better, Connor, you can't be results oriented. You've got to you've got to just recognize that you made the right call. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and man, I, I really want to just call here. Let's make the call. Seven three off suit. It's such a horrible, horrible, horrible hand. Um, but we're just getting just sick, sick odds. I mean, look at that two, four, six, eight, nine to one with all of the implied odds. I just kind of feel like that the chances of us uh, of us hitting like a, a two pair hand is not good. We're looking at like what three percent. Uh, but I feel like if we do hit our two pair hand or our trips hand or a very special hand, then uh, we're gonna get a lot of chips out of these guys. Um, you got it, Damon. Which maybe we don't get maybe we don't get raised off of this. We've got we've got at least a three outer, a six percent, and if we hit that three outer, I think I think that we probably get uh, a pretty nice little payday here, and it's a fold. It's a fold. Made the fold. Oh God, you guys, don't try that at home. Anytime you look at seven three offsuit, it's okay to just fold it pre-flop. It doesn't matter if you're getting nine to one uh, straight pot odds and a billion to one implied pot odds. You know, really, all that's going to happen is you're going to get involved in a hand that you shouldn't. It's okay to it's okay to fold seven three offsuit, you guys, but whatever, whatever. We're gonna make the. Uh, it's actually kind of funny if you look how the, the the hand went down. I think that if a five does hit, we probably we probably get uh, <laughs> we probably get a lot of chips from Damon. Guys, I'm pretty tired. Pretty tired. We wouldn't be. Uh, I don't think we'd make that call with with seven three off suit if we're thinking straight. Gotta say. What'd you do? Do you need me to play? I, I kind of feel like it would be better if you did play, yeah. Whatever. I think that you'd have uh, a, a better EV and a better ROI in this thing. <laughs> we need a Connor emote. <laughs> that'd be cool. Uh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'm not going to throw in the towel, Math. You know what? We're going to let the, uh, the rebuys and the add-on periods end. And we are going to uh, go throw a little water on our face, uh, slap ourselves a couple of times, wake ourselves up, get our game face on, and bring that A game. Because you know what I want to do? I don't want to see myself at a final table, mathematics. I want to. I want to take it down again. I wanted to go back to back for the win in this thing. Um, I think we can do it. I guess it wouldn't be back to back, right? We we just cashed in this thing last night. Uh, we missed the final table because we got a little bit sticky with jacks when under the gun shoved with eight big blinds, small blind reshipped it with 12 big blinds. We had like 10 big blinds. We called it jacks. Thought that we were going to be able to get the triple up. Instead, we're up against kings and queens. So, wow. King EPC says, do you feel the casinos could do more to make poker more friendly? Uh, people wanting to get into poker can sometimes be turned off. Or do you feel the casinos are getting it right? I don't, I don't think that the casino is getting it right at all, King. I think that one of the biggest problems with poker is it's in casinos to begin with. I think it would be much, much better if, uh, you know, you could, you could just have little poker halls everywhere and it had nothing to do with, with, uh, with casinos. And if it was just like people went to go play poker and there wasn't any rake. Uh, I think it would be better. I think one of the big problems with poker right now and the, and the reason why, you know, the reason why it became illegal to begin with is because... The online sites modeled online poker over the you know after the casinos, which uh, you know modeled poker after you know blackjack and and and, and craps and roulette, and they're just trying to get as much from the players as they could. So, I think that I don't, I don't know. I think that getting poker out of the casinos is probably one of the first steps to really making the the game explode. Do you think like? Card room should open up then, just dedicated yeah. to poker then. I do. Oh. I do. I mean, you see commerce. Kind of like commerce. Yeah. But, but not like commerce. I mean, commerce is basically just a casino. I mean, yeah. because commerce is basically uh, looking at the card room and looking at their poker as, uh, you know, they're modeling it after after Vegas. You know, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know how you can you know, run poker 
without... I don't know how you can run poker without raking the hell out of it. I really don't. But you, you look at these other games, you look at like League of Legends, and you look at, at Hearthstone, and you look at uh, you know Magic the Gathering, you look at all these other games, and it just doesn't feel like... you know. It feels like we're doing something wrong with poker. It feels like we're busting the players too much. We we want it to be a plus EV environment, rather than rather than just you know busting, busting, busting a big percentage of the players, and taking most of that money and giving it to the operators, which then throw it into the marketing engine. Um, there's 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 a better way, I'm sure of it. Uh, <laughs> so Connor lets us know, Connor lets us know that it is actually a, uh, <laughs> it is actually a spot on, on, on stars where they turn over the cards. So he got to actually see, he's like, oh, eight, three. Okay. Come on. No eight, no three. And it just comes out completely clean. Uh, Gary Hotmail says, should you play when you're tired? No, you shouldn't play when you're tired. You should, you should also not play when you're drunk. Um, uh, no, you shouldn't. Iron Fist, what happened at the last tourney? What happened is I won Iron Fist. I took it from that less than a, than a, than a big blind and just completely turned it around. Ended up taking the whole thing down. It was the craziest comeback I've had in years. I can't remember ever having... I, I did have a, a, comeback, a comeback like that in that Raz event. I was down to like two... Uh, I was down to like two antis at one point in the, in the 2004 Raz event that I took second in at the World Series. Uh, but Raz is a little bit different. You, you you have those kind of comebacks easier in uh, in the anti games like like Stud Stud High Low, and Raz. Ah, oh, guys, I am tired. That last tournament went way too long. What's up, number four? No cheese. Good to see you, buddy. Well, TNA Gamer, I don't know. I, I don't think that I would ever get into that side of things again. But uh, what what I think could be done is a complete reduction of the rake. Zero rake. Um, what, what that would do is it would keep the, uh, keep the whales in play. And I think that there's probably some... You know, it would keep the, the big fish around longer. The big losers don't lose as quickly. The uh, the break-even players become slightly winners. You actually you, you remove the rake, and all of a sudden you've got an economy where the majority of players can lose. As long as you er, the majority of players can win, as long as you're able to continue getting the the big losers to put in money, which is going to be easier because um, be, because there's going to be more of a, a social proof that people are actually winning and beating the game. Uh, so the only the only problem is then it becomes really hard to market. It it, it becomes hard to out market the other guys, but that that is, I think, the one thing that they could do online that could could compete with Poker Stars. I mean, Poker Stars right now, I think, is kind of being short sighted with their with their card room. They're kind of thinking, you know, they just introduced the uh, the casino games, for example. So they're they're kind of just trying to squeeze it for as much as they can for uh, you know, as long as they can, rather than trying to create an environment that is actually plus EV. So I think that. If I was trying to get into that operation side, I would start by eliminating the rake, and then I would start going out to sponsors and try to actually create a plus EV environment. You know, I, I kind of envision long term. I could see I could see a poker economy where no one is even depositing anymore. That it's just you know it's just a lot of sponsorship money coming in, and you know all of that being shared between the operator and the uh, the, the poker players themselves. You know, when it comes down to it, guys, I mean, think about it. Your time, your time and your attention is worth quite a bit. You know, I say that all the time on this, uh, on this stream. I value your time, and I value your attention so much that I, you know, I, I really try not to hold anything back when I'm talking about strategy, you know, when I'm talking about tactics at the poker table. Um, but the online sites, they don't really value your time or your attention at all because if you're playing on, you know, if you're playing on, uh, you know, these sites... A lot of times they just let you play and they're just trying to feed you into other games, but they don't really value your time and your attention in these free roll situations and these micro stake situations. Um, I, I feel like I feel like there's ways to take your time and attention if you're if if you're playing on a site. I think there's ways to convert 
that time and attention into money, which you could then use to create a, a positive sum economy for poker. And if that happened, the game could explode and could become bigger than anything that anyone's ever thought of. But if they don't have breaks, how are they going to pay people without breaks? Yeah, dealers have to get paid, but dealers don't get paid by the rake. Dealers get paid by tips. You know, most of... Are they already paid by tips then? So the rake doesn't even, doesn't even go to them at all? The rake, I mean, they get paid minimum wage, but uh, most poker dealers, they're, they're really relying on their tips, not, not any sort of uh, income they get from the casino. Okay, and and online, so that's not a good online, there's really no operational difference as far as cost goes yeah, between... There's no dealer in online. Yeah, you know, you look at online, there's really no difference between the cost of running Zynga Poker or Candy Crush and Poker Stars. Think about that. I mean, what do you think it would be ad revenue that would be making money for like an online site? Ad revenue, ad. sponsorships. You know, you could see like uh, you, you could have it be like you, you know the, money, right? the Nike Championship of online poker. You know, you get you could have it be like the the Mercedes uh, the Mercedes you know, Winter Open, where first place is a million dollars in a brand new Mercedes, uh, and it's sponsored by Mercedes. You know, they, they you know things like that. You know the the the, the, the Chrysler so Cup. Also include uh, like physical card rooms, or this is only and ex as guesses, how would poker halls operate without rake? How would they break even? I mean, let's let's take a look. If if I go down to Crown and Anchor and I want to go play darts, they don't charge me to play the darts. They charge me for the drinks. They charge me for the the food. You know, there's other things that you can you know yeah, sell to your poker players rather than trying to take you know three dollars out of every pot that they win. And if you actually look at the amount, the, the the price that poker players pay for the privilege of playing with each other, it's exorbitant. You know, when I was playing online and grinding multi tables, I was paying 10k a month in rake. Um, you know, if you're playing live, you're you're if you're playing live 30 hours, if you actually start adding up how much how much you're paying in time or rake or whatever, it's obscene. It's obscene. Okay, so gosh. that's what I think, guys. This um, poker kid Luck is playing on a site that has doesn't have antis. How tight should he be playing, and what should his open size be? So uh, poker kid Luck playing on a site that doesn't have antis. Uh, you definitely want to be playing a, a lower VPIP, a, a lower percentage of your pot, uh, of your of your hands, um, if you're playing a tournament that doesn't have antes. And I would say you still can kind of probably taper down because you're still going to have that kind of issue of, of of effective stacks, the effective average stack getting lower and lower compared to the big blind. So you can still kind of use that taper that we talked about starting with a 3x big blind early on and tapering down again eventually until it's 2x what you know the things that are going to change is uh you're going to have you're going to have more fold equity with fewer chips so you can kind of let yourself get a little bit lower than you would in a no limit hold'em situation with antes you know no limit hold'em situation with antes you're looking at 10 9 8 7 big blinds really anything less than 7 big blinds and if you open ship you're really not going to have a lot of fold equity um, I mean, sometimes you have a little fold equity with six or five big blinds, but don't count on it. Without the antes, I mean, you can have four big blinds open ship and get people to fold because without that an you know, added ante money, they just don't really, they're, they're not in, you know, they don't feel like they're priced in to make the call. Um, so your VPIP should be a little bit lower. Uh, you, you do need to play a little more snug. But for the most part, it, it, you know, it's, it's not that different. It's not that different. It, it's just blind steals aren't as valuable to you because you'll be, you'll be making it, you know, if you're making it two and a half times a big blind and it's 100, 200, so you're making it 500 to win 300, that's not as enticing as making it 500 to win 500. Um, it's a good question, man. It's a good question. And there's, you know, it's definitely a, a, a big difference between like a pot limit tournament and a no limit tournament. The biggest difference between those two formats are the lack of anti. Okay, so Kermit DeFrog here. Yes, this is real money. Uh, the Bob Hatter, almost every game on Twitch is real money. Rob K, they should just make you register your real name and all your poker names of the government and take taxes out of every win over a certain amount before it goes into your account, like 15 or 10%. Problem solved. 
uh, ask Gasis, what would how would poker halls operate without rake? How would they break even, let alone make a profit? Don't get me wrong, I would love for there not to be a rake, but I just don't see how that's feasible. Yeah, I forgot the yeah. You did? Yep. L O L O. I feel like I should just go home. I feel like I should just go home and 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 crash. I'm gonna just sleep right here and forget that this tournament ever happened. How did I? How did I let that happen? It's not as big of a disaster in in this tournament because this tournament actually the add-on is only 4,500 compared to 4,000 for the buy-in and the rebuy. So it's not as big of just like a, a, a complete disaster, but that's a pretty big disaster, you guys. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm so just like... Yeah, believe there. I don't think that that's quite what I'm saying. Obviously, you know that. Uh, right, Bob Hatter. Right. I think that we got some people letting me know. You're about to forget the add-on. They say. It's okay. <laughs> so wait. So um, are you the short stack then on your table? No. Uh, no, I'm not the short stack. There's a couple of shorter stacks, but I'm pretty. Fine. Pretty okay. disgusted hey, with the way I'm yeah, playing today. Awesome. Guys, I'm really disgusted with the way I'm playing today. This is it. This is it. I'm going to try to take this tournament down, but if it doesn't go that way, I'm done to, I'm done for the day. We'll start again tomorrow. We'll try to get a full eight hours sleep and be ready to go. Uh, because I'm, I'm running on fumes, you guys. I'm running on coffee. And it's... Uh, I feel like an idiot. I really do. Ah... <sighs> This is what I would like to see, uh, you know, fun reel. All of you guys who are asking how it would even be done, I would like to see a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer poker site. You know, you look at uh, you look at protocols like Bitcoin. No one operates Bitcoin per se. It's decentralized. It's trustless. It's peer-to-peer. -peer. You look at you know stuff like BitTorrent, you know, and and that kind of thing. You look at like the you know the, the Tor network, and you look at these kind of decentralized systems. I would like to see a decentralized poker system where it's not relying on any sort of operator that needs to make money. It's relying on you know, the players themselves to, to actually contribute resources to operating the game. And um, in that situation, no, you wouldn't need to collect a rake, would you? Because there wouldn't actually be anybody who is, uh, who is operating the thing. That's what I would like to see. Some sort of open source, peer-to-peer, -peer, decentralized poker system. A protocol. I think that could happen. <sighs> I know, guys. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sick about it, too. I'm pretty sick about it, too. It's I can't like believe it's, it. It's not like it's the first time you've forgotten that. Huh? It's not. It's not. Gary Hotmail lets me know. <laughs> Don't forget the add-on. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. I won't. I won't. We don't believe in add-ons. Yeah, we don't believe in add-ons here. Where we where we're going, we don't need add-ons. <laughs> just like, God, you guys, how do I do that? How do I how do I make that kind of boneheaded play? I'm so disappointed with myself. I really am. I'm so disappointed with myself. I'm looking at the way this tournament is going. And I'm like, wow. Wow. I'm just... I know, Bob Hatter. I know. Oh, my gosh. I know he was sitting there I'm, so, I'm, that I'm so disappointed. <laughs> Nash, yes, we're home. But uh, I, I feel... Like I am drunk and need to go home. <laughs> I 
I don't feel tilted, Jackasaurus. I just actually just feel like I'm an idiot. That's how I feel. I just feel like I, I feel like a, a, an idiot. It's okay. You know what? Nobody plays every tournament perfectly. <laughs> Nobody plays every tournament perfectly. Okay, Dutch. Yeah. You believe. Look at you yesterday. You did so great yesterday. What's what's going on? What's going on is I haven't slept since yesterday. It's basically uh, what happens. Okay, you know what, guys? I'm gonna sit out for a second. I gotta get some sleep. No, I'm not gonna sleep. <laughs> I'm not gonna sleep. I'm gonna sit out for a second. Nice. I'm gonna go throw some water on my face. I'm going to, uh, you know, shake it power off. Nap. Power nap. Not a power nap. We're not doing a power nap. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta change something here because I feel like I'm just gonna lose my money right now. So, I gotta stretch, shave. I don't know. What, 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 what do we do when uh, smelling salts? We've got uh, we're just jacked up on coffee. It's not helping anymore. <sighs> you don't keep on saying I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Mm hmm. That's a good idea, Papist. Have a good time, man, with your football crew. Um, we might be back. We might be. We might still be in this thing. Um, he will still be in this thing. Maybe. It depends on how long he is at his uh, football crew. Oh. This thing's not going to last more than four hours. Eighty-five out of one hundred and seven. We're going to make the fold. We're going to wait until the big blind hits before we take our little uh, stretch, and we're going to remind ourselves what we're playing for. First place is just under a grand. It looks like they're paying fifteen places. Uh, 70 bucks for 15th, $935. You know what? If we win this, we're buying the chair. That's how we can make it worth our while. If we win this, hey, Michelle. Yes, I heard you. That's what we're going to do, okay? That's what you're going to do. If I, right. if I take it down, we're going to say we're buying chairs. What do I get? A chair. I don't want a chair. What do you get? You get this chair. I don't want that chair. I want my own chair. <laughs> we can buy two chairs with $900. I want, chair, I want something else. What, will it be of equal value? E equal or lesser no, value? No, no, no. Equal. Equal. More. Equal or more value. <laughs> she, wants something, she wants something of equal or more value. Uh, yeah. What is an add-on, Salimio? Doesn't matter. Ah, something yeah. we don't need. Doesn't matter. We don't think about add-ons. Okay, we make the fold here. I've won three bracelets. This is Jimmy Bruv. All three have been Hold'em. I've had a, a bunch of final tables of the World Series. You wouldn't know it by the way I'm playing today, but you know what? We're not really doing that bad. If you look around, there's, we're right in the middle of the pack at our table and uh, about to hit the ante round in 26 seconds. So we're going to be right back, guys. We're going to go ahead and sit out next hand. Going to throw some water on the face, get some uh, get some blood flowing. We're going to. Uh, what do you think the biggest change in your game today compared to you ten years ago? Money's management styles, etc. Donkey Pro. Donkey Pro. I'd say the biggest change in my tournament game has just been tapering. No. That whole uh, that whole tapering idea. Also, being off the drugs has been a huge huge help to my game. Um, you know, quitting the cigarettes, quitting uh, quitting weed. I think that's a huge huge difference. I mean, I used to just play perma stoned, so. Uh, I guess we'll I guess we'll wait for one second here. Uh five card draw, Ken Low. That's a good book. It's a good book. <laughs> Six oh nine. <laughs> we have to go back. It's your chips. You forgot the add on. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, six and nine. You made my day. I'll be right back, you guys.
No, he might not. I think he knows. That's okay, guys. Really <sighs> okay, for those that don't know, how's that? Iron Fist says, I wish I could give Dutch my unwavering confidence. Dutch, do breathing exercises. Look up Breath of Fire and Ricks and Gracie breathing on YouTube. Oh, Trust yeah, me, this will help so Hatter. much for mental focus. You won't believe it. I Bob will, Iron Fist. You should look at the Bob Hatter's uh, little meme he made you. Scroll up. Do you see it? You should, you Bob should actually, Hatter. You should take a picture of it and put it on there, uh, below your, your picture for Bob. What is that? What are we doing? Because Bob the Hatter made you a little, um, little meme thing. Okay, let me take a look here. And you should, you should take that picture <laughs> and put it under Don't your Don't forget under the your, under your guy. Oh it's very man, cute. I love it. It is. That's it's pretty good. Cute. It's pretty good. I like that. Okay, you know what? We're gonna start. We should. We should probably start just putting that right there on the table. You just put that right there in the in the corner, just to remind us. Just to remind us, don't forget the hat on. We'll just put that right there. Okay, you know, um, Sala Lim Limo is asking again what's the best way to get to poker pro pro properly, how to learn poker properly and stuff. So, okay. sincere person, I'm sure. Iron Fist, we got Henry NVA. Drink that Mario energy drink. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Do it. Do <laughs> There's it. no way. Like, Drink the Mario see, energy drink. You see if it's expired. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Um, Jungle Iron Fist, we're gonna try it. We're gonna look that up. The Gracie breathing. Gracie breathing. Breath of fire. Gracie breathing. We're gonna look that up after this is done. Maybe we should look it up right now. No, okay. Sure we'll make the, the uh, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna make an open we're under the gun with Queen Jack off suit. Uh, Salimio, what's the best way to get into poker properly? Books to read. Salimio, there's really not going to be, if you, if, if you haven't read a lot of poker books, there's not really going to be a bad book to read. Go out and read every book that's in your local library in the, uh, in the poker section. Every single one. Um, then go on Amazon and start picking up all the books that you can uh, that, that have you know, a decent rating. Uh, go to pokerbooks.com. I'll put up a book. Uh, I'll be putting up a book list here pretty soon as far as uh, recommended you know, books for beginners, intermediate, advanced. Uh, some that right off the top of my head I would really urge you to read. Um, if you're playing live poker, Salimio, I would uh, definitely urge you to read the uh, Zachary Elwood is a, is a pretty big one. Uh, all, all those tells books that he did, the Reading Poker Tells, Verbal Poker Tells. The Navarro book is really good. Uh, the Jonathan Little books are good. They're worth taking a look at. Uh, Harrington, I would recommend. Uh, let me think. The Lee Jones book, uh, you know, beating what is it? Winning low limit hold'em or beating low limit hold'em? I can't remember. Mm. We got Tom Hammers there. Got a little note on Tom Hammers that might come in handy down the road. Tom Hammers, it sounds so familiar. Is that is that the guy from Minnesota? Tom Hammers. Tom Hammers Poker. Yeah. I wonder if that is the Tom Hammers that we know. Uh, so there's a there's a Tom Hammers from Minnesota that uh, comes down here quite a bit to uh, to play sports bets. Yeah, we'll go ahead and make the call here, Tom. We're making the fold here. Not really the flop we're looking for. I feel better, guys. I feel you know a couple of uh, a couple of slaps on the face, a little bit of uh, water to the face. I'm feeling better. Texas to Nevada opening up the two X. It's a pretty good open, man. I, I feel like it's almost a little bit. Uh, I feel like it's a little too early to be making it two x. I'd be making it like five hundred. There's no problem with making it two x as long as your as long as your preflop raise amount doesn't change Texas to, to Nevada. That's fine.
He had that little guy on there still. You should put him, you know where you should put that little guy? That little don't forget the add-on thing? I, I put it at the top right. Where do you think you I should put, put him, it? Um, you should put it right. You see where your chat window is? Yep. There's a little space above it where the chair is. You see it? Okay. Right there. Like right I think that's where we should put it. Top, like tropic right girl, there. Below Tropic Girl. Okay. That's where we'll put it. I mean, because you can see everybody's card still, and it won't get in your um, whatever that is in the way. Okay. That's where we'll put that. Looks good. That's where you should probably have me floating. <laughs> okay. No? Right there. No, that's good. It's a good spot for it. Six, seven of clubs. We're going to go ahead and take a flop with these guys. We will take a flop with you, Dickma. Did Tom Hammers get back to us? I'm sure it's got to be him, right? Who would who would name themselves Tom ha Hammers unless it really was Tom Hammers? Who's he's a Tom poker Hammers? player. Uh, he's a poker player from Minnesota. He comes down a lot to uh, uh, play some sports book bets. What, did you talk to him in chat? Yeah, he didn't say anything, though. Iron Fist, I will remember. Can you please make sure Dutch learns about breathing exercises? It will seriously help him manage stress and no sleep. Trust me from experience. I will remember, Iron Fist, the breath of fire, Gracie fire breath. I'll remember. I will remember. Jesus. Is that true? Ireland at the festival? Ireland rake is 15... 15, is that pounds or is that... Doesn't it doesn't surprise me at all. Sorry to hear it, mathematics. Okay, Iron Fist, I'll I'll do it. I, I believe you, and I think that it's going to help my game. I'm looking forward to uh, uh, learning something new that could actually uh, really help out. Yeah, meditation does work. Sam Harris mm -hmm. did a whole thing on it. And you and you know what? You have meditated before. Mm -hmm. Breathe, breathing exercises. I and think exercising is a, you know. There's nothing woo woo. There's nothing woo woo about meditation. And there's nothing, you know, woo woo about visualization. These are good things. These are good techniques that actually help you. You know, this is neuroscience. It's not, uh, you know, it's not just feelings. We can we can measure this kind of stuff now. Oh. <sighs> hmm. Good. I'm glad to hear it, Double Gutter. If you, uh, well, you know, if you do end up finishing it, let me know what you think. And uh, it's okay to skip to the end too. The afterword is worth uh, is probably the most valuable part of the book. But I'm I'm glad you're enjoying the read, Double Gutter. It means a lot to me. I I really put uh really put my heart and soul into that thing, man. I really did over a year. Do people see the dedication in it? Mm -hmm. Oh, the dedication is the most important part of the book. I guess so. The dedication is the most important part. Right. And what is the dedication? Dedicated to Michelle Cosper and Eva Seibert. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and go for the 600. Making that blind steal, hoping to get, hoping to get heads up. Uh, Tropicgirl62 doesn't want us to get heads up. She wants us to go ahead and have to fire into her. 9, 10, 11, 12. And what do we have here if all Tropic Girl has is overcards, which we kind of think she does? Uh, what we have are 3, 6, 10 outs twice, which is 20, 40%. And do we have fold equity? I feel like we do. I feel like we do. If she has overcards, I think she folds. So let's go ahead and put her to the test. And if she doesn't fold, well, we're going to get a 7 or a 2 or a 5, or we're going to go take a nap. What is that little thing na named, anyways? That little Pikachu thing? I don't know Pokemon. Pikachu? Isn't it Pikachu? That's not Pikachu. That's I don't somebody. know. Anybody know who that is in the chat? It takes a special type of player where we're going to try to go ahead and uh, go for that re-raise shove there. Uh, Tropic Girl isn't, uh, we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not making that shove because we think she's a fish. 
we're making that shove because we give her credit for having the kind of creativity where she's going to take a stab at it with overcards. And then when we shove, now she's thinking that she only has six outs. Uh, so she's looking at 24% best case, and a lot of times she's thinking maybe I don't even have that. Um, so it's basically what we call a semi-bluff. Uh, turning a hand that has a, a decent chunk of equity, we're thinking that we're probably at about 40% there. Turning a 40 percenter. Is there an auto? And, oh, I'm sorry, Russ. Is there yeah, an auto okay. add-on? No. Oh, okay. I don't think so. I said you could turn on. Is there an auto add-on? I don't know. That's what I just said. Oh, and that little guy's name is Slowpoke. For fuck's sake. There is an auto add-on. <laughs> there is an auto add-on. Okay, guys. <laughs> that's that's never happening again. You learn something new every day. Who told me about who, who told us about that? Yumius. Hey Dutch, you can also click auto add on. Yumius, thank you. Thank you very much for helping us out. That is a huge help. Uh <laughs> never again. <laughs> never again will we miss an add on. Never again because of you, Yumius. Thank you very much. Lucian, so sad that you keep calling Slowpoke the little guy. <laughs> Iron Fist says, cold showers are great too. Two minutes of ice cold water does wonders. Okay, that's a good thing to know. I might, uh, I might try that. I might try it if we actually get really deep in this thing and have to, uh, have to put on our game face for the, uh, for the final table. I might, during one of these breaks, just run into the, uh, run into the shower. So Tropic Girl, you're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and give you the um, the bony fish right now uh, for making the open limp. It's just never okay. It's never okay to do what you just did, especially at this stage of the ta at the tournament. I'll tell you, we're not giving uh, bony fish to people just for uh, just for open limping early on before the antis kick in. But once the antis kick in, it's time for that bony fish. Time for that bony fish. TV, uh, TV Electric asks, do you think painting the room you play poker in a different color would improve your poker performance? I got to think that, you know, little things like that probably affect it. So it probably either hurts it or helps it. It's, you know, it's probably not just like it's going to stay the same. I don't know, TV. Polarized asked if, uh, if you've read any Sam Harris books. Yep. Big fan of Sam Harris. Big and fan. And Yep. Every chance I get. So I kind of feel like maybe a half pot size bet would have been better there than the uh, than just the the three X. Maybe not. Uh, Maple Nuts says, "Hey, does anyone know how I can record and stream videos except OBC? Wish I could help you, Maple Nuts. I use XSplit. I hear OBC is pretty good, but I I don't really know. I'm not. I don't know." Pikachu. He's making fun of you, us thinking it. Pikachu is yellow. Yeah. Pikachu is yellow. That's all I know. <laughs> I think it's the add-on to somebody. Yeah, Salimio says, how the fuck did you just read that like a book? Uh, I hope you're talking about that little shove with a 7-3. If you are, um, I guess, you know, just hundreds of thousands of hands beat situational awareness into you, and you just realize that you know uh, you, you realize those spots when you've got when you've got 10 outs and those uh, those spots when you're when you're just stone cold screwed um i don't i don't really know it just it makes sense though right it makes sense if they if if uh tropic girl had much of like a bigger pocket pair in her hand i i, I don't i think that she raises pre-flop or uh, at least thinks about raising pre-flop and she's pretty much just expecting us to see bet so when she raises, it doesn't really mean much, except she expects us to see bet and is playing back at us. So a lot of times we're going to fold there, but the fact that we do have a good chunk of equity, I mean, we've got 40%, uh, we're faced with the decision of either calling and check folding on the turn when we normally miss, uh, you know, we'll miss on the turn 80% of the time. It's only a 40% equity if we actually get to see the rest, you know, the turn and the river. Uh, so if we call... 
we're, we're basically losing the hand 80% of the time, and we're going to check and be bet off of it on the, on, the, on the turn. Or, you know, we shove, put her on the kind of hand that we think she has, which is, you know, over cards with pretty much no draw, just making a move against us and hope that she decides to give it a fold and give us credit for having her beat. If she doesn't, then we just have to catch. You know? And a lot of times, worst case scenario, worst case scenario is we're still at least going to have four outs, which is going to put us at 16%, which we're not going to like. It's going to really suck. But uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, real question. Do you think... Uh, uh, do you think masturbating before playing I makes you play so. better? <laughs> yeah, Cyril, I don't think so. I think that it's actually the reverse. Okay. I, I think it play. I think it makes you play worse. I've actually thought about this, and you know, because whatever you're, you're playing at high levels, you're looking for any sort of edge you can. Uh, I think there's actually been studies about this that show that. I mean, when you're playing in a hot state, um, you're, you 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 make poor decisions at certain things, but other other things you actually do better at. I, I, I kind of feel like poker might be one of those things that you do better at. But I, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I don't even know how... I, I don't think that any sort of test that, that an individual could do themselves is really going to be... is really going to have the kind of sample size that makes any sort of difference. So, I don't, you know, maybe we can get... maybe we can get a thousand poker players to all agree on a on, on some sort of test. <laughs> It sounds ridiculous, it's, but I mean, it, it's one of those things that are like painting your room a different color. I mean, it's either going to help you, hurt you, or not do anything to you, right? And my guess is there's not going to be a lot of things that you can add or subtract to the equation of poker mindset and poker environment that's not going to change your results somehow. So it's going to help you or hurt you. Uh, I don't know what it does, but I suspect that it actually, uh, I, I suspect that it would actually help you. Um, you know, keeping it bottled, keeping it bottled up. We're going to go ahead and make it 600 here. Two and a half times a big blind. Uh, see, will ya? We'll find out why. I don't know why he didn't. So we're making it half pot here since uh, Dickma has position on us. We don't really want to give Dickma a lot of reason to continue with the hand. Uh, well... Make the call. Hope for one of those. Uh, hope for one of those ten outs. We don't love it, but we are making the call. That's kind of ugly. We didn't have quite as many outs as we thought we had, guys. We didn't have quite as many outs as we thought. We had seven outs, and if we knew we had seven outs, we're making the fold. And you know what? Now we don't have enough to really play standard. We don't have enough to play standard. I don't really like a, a Dickmas call on the flop. Um, not a lot of not a lot of turn cards that can come where where Dickma uh, isn't going to just fold there. So he's calling to hit a three outer. That three outer is going to hit about six percent of the time, which means ninety-four percent of the time we win that hand on the flaw on the uh, on the turn. That's kind of brutal. I guess he had five outs, right? A four actually is also an out, so he had a uh, he had five outs. So ninety percent of the time we win that on the uh, on the turn. Maybe on the turn when we fire out our bet, maybe we should have just fired out more, just put them all into the decision, because when we have to make the call with pocket fours, then we don't really like making the call when we're getting three to one. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like there's enough of a chance that he was just kind of floating and making a big shove there. There's enough of a spot where Fours is actually going to win the hand without improving that it's not horrible. Wow. Very tempted. Can we get through? Can we get through both of them? I don't think so. Maybe we could have if we did if we did it just a little bit earlier. I don't think we get through it now. So I think now what we're doing, we're sitting here with, uh, you know, something like 15 bigs. 
a little less than 15 big. So we're in that tween stack. We're going to go ahead and basically uh, fold our way to a 10x stack and uh, fold our way to a 10x stack. Maybe we, we actually get a, a decent spot to make a three bet shove where we, we've got a decent amount of fold equity. It's going to be kind of hard to have fold equity with this kind of stack, though. So we're probably better off. You know, for our three bets. We still have plenty of fold equity for our open shoves. I heard Vegas has more churches per capita than any city in the U.S. Seriously not kidding, says 9-iron-12. I was pretty stunned when I heard that. I'm kind of stunned to hear that, too. That kind of, that really surprises me. Uh, the ball pattern proved 9-iron wrong right there. Bible minus the bees. Is that right? Yeah. So what's the city that has the, uh, the most per capita? Las Vegas, Nevada is one of the least Bible-minded cities, is what this says. <laughs> what does that mean, Bible-minded cities? I don't know. Totally not before polka and Dutch. I mean, there's no way that, uh, there's no way that Salt Lake City is, like, one of the least Bible-minded cities, right? Yeah, so this isn't actually what... This doesn't prove 9, 9, 12 wrong at all. Oh, it doesn't? No. It, 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 this this, uh, this measure of... Yeah, this measure of... Uh, Bible-minded cities isn't isn't quite the same as um, churches per capita. You know what? We're gonna go ahead and make that max shove right now. It's a little. Uh, it, it feels like it feels a little strong. It feels a little heavy. But we do have. You know, this this might be one of the the last opportunities we have where we can make a shove like this and actually have fold equity. Okay, so we get Tropic Girl to make the call, so we're kind of screwed. Let's get that Jack or the eight. gonna be it for us boys we are done for the night just make bad play after bad play we're not we're not investing any more money when uh, when we're making these kind of uh, kind of mistakes so tell you what guys thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for joining the stream I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, coming right back tomorrow for the uh, for, for some good events tomorrow I think that we might have a, a, a spring championship tomorrow that we might play in if we're feeling it I think that the spring championship of online poker at the World Series of, po of uh, Poker.com, at, at WSOP.com, I think it starts tomorrow. We've got, what do we get tomorrow? We've got the uh, main event satellite. Maybe we play that. Yeah, the spring the spring poker series open starts tomorrow. I, I'm tempted to just go ahead and take a shot at that. It's kind of hard to play our best when we're streaming and pay attention to the uh, the chat. That's not why we didn't play our best tonight. The reason we didn't play our best tonight is because we're tired as hell and we went way too late last night way too late you know we only had like an hour of sleep so it's it's time to call it a night i feel like earlier today i was watching a uh, a guy play poker and he was just getting smashed he just kept on downing alcohol just do, 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 vodka 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 and by the end of it he couldn't even like sit in his chair he was falling out of his chair had a lot of people watching him just go off and get drunk and play this tournament in bavada I almost feel like if you put him in this seat right now, he would have had a better shot of that tournament than I did just now. So we're, we're calling it a night. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, sorry we couldn't make another final table tonight. Sorry that we just don't have the win in us tonight. Uh, the wind has been sucked out, so we're going to go ahead and um, call it a day and save our money when we know we don't have the best of it. We're, we're going to lead by example. If you're tired don't play if you can't remember your middle name don't play if uh if you're watching and you want to support the stream though and you want to see when we actually come on tomorrow and try to take it down please click on that follow button uh don't forget too that all of our subscribers were giving them the copy of poker tilt which uh hopefully you know some of the life lessons will keep you from uh, putting on the kind of poor display that you just saw tonight so thank you guys for joining us we will be right back tomorrow Join us at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, maybe a little bit earlier. We might actually play a little bit earlier. I'm just going to go. 
I'm just gonna go crash, and whenever I wake up, I might I just. I guess we should take. Might just, we should take a day off before Friday. Maybe Thursday. Maybe we should start taking Thursdays off or something. Maybe I don't know. Well, you gotta it's been do too, it because uh, it's like our schedule has to, you know. Yeah. Give us enough sleep. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Really appreciate all of your uh, all of you uh, coming by and hanging out with us. If you missed the uh, the poker clinic, it is on it is on YouTube with that link that I just popped up. It'll also be uh, in the highlights. If you're a subscriber, you can go and and, and check them out. If not, uh, I'll I'll post the, uh, the the YouTube link here pretty soon. So thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. See you tomorrow. Do you talk to your friend Jack? Tell you what, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining the stream. I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, coming right back tomorrow for the uh, for for some good events tomorrow. I think that we might have a a spring championship.